So it's Monday morning. It's the start of the week. It's the 2nd of November. And today is going to be weighing day. Set the scales up. Last week's weighing was 186.6, I think it was, or just under 187. So it's going to be interesting to see what today's is after the weekend. Played golf yesterday. Burn a lot of calories, so we'll see how we get on. Okay, so just weighed in 188.4. It's a little bit higher than what I was, well, it's a lot higher than what I was expecting. Um, it could be down to holding quite a bit of water now. Um, I'm salt loading, so that's another added factor that could be what what's causing it. Um, I'm going to weigh in again tomorrow morning, so we'll see if it's balanced out. I did drink a lot of water over the weekend, and yeah, I didn't, I didn't feel too well last night, so I slept in a little bit more. My alarm went off at 6 o'clock, I had an, another hour of sleep. Um, got a, quite a relaxed day today. I'm going to be on the computer most of the day, I'm going to be planning some big things coming up, and I've got some work to do. Um, setting up like a bulletin board, so I'm going to be posting everything on there. Just a quick condition check, even though 188.4. So you can see, body is coming in well. We'll check it again tomorrow, see what it says, and uh, yeah, stay relaxed, not worry too much about it because I know it's going to level out. going to make myself a coffee and get upstairs and do some work on the laptop for a little while. The joys of living two minutes away from a superstore means that you can walk there. Um, it's pretty cold at the minute in the UK, 2nd November, um, so I've got the hat on. I'm going to put some music on, go over the shops, get some food because it's breakfast time and I'm hungry and we're low on food in the house. Fog off. Not good, it's cold, it's wet. Ah oh well, to the gym soon. Here we go then. Monsters, a couple of those last me a couple of days. Got a couple of donuts for after training. I bought a couple of these Tilda's, legendary rice, whole grain, pilo, gluten free, two of those. And I bought some eggs as well for breakfast time because I'm hungry now. So I'm using what we've got available. We've got some, got six eggs. We've got a couple of pieces of pork on there. I've got seven Ritz crackers, and I've got a banana for breakfast. Put it all into my fitness pal. Five hundred and forty-one calories. It's all on there. Perfect. Sets me up so I can eat more later on throughout the day. Right, time to cook up the next two meals for the day. Got 450 grams of chicken. Got my whole grain rice that I'll be having in a little while. Got my donuts for after. And I'm about to break open the zero calorie monster. I'm struggling with a bit of energy now. It's 11 o'clock. 20 past 11 actually. So trying to just have a bit of a kick. Eat at around 12, and then I'm going to train at around 2. So, get this down me, get some more work done. Putting loads in place, coming soon in January, so keep your eyes peeled. And, yeah, please leave your comments underneath, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, so the first question that I was asked was by Karen Pugh. Um, I still have people say to me, muscle weighs heavier than fat. And since being told this isn't the case by yourself, can you explain? Yeah, so essentially, a pound of feathers and a pound of lead still both weigh a pound. It's exactly the same between muscle and fat. The difference between muscle and fat is the fact that muscle is leaner. So a pound of muscle would be a lot smaller than a pound of fat. Okay, so a pound of fat could be the size of my hand. A pound of muscle could be the size of my hand now. So that's the difference. The surface area that it's covering 
is obviously going to be a lot different between muscle and fat. But a pound of muscle and a pound of fat weigh exactly the same. So you could weigh nine stone ten, I don't know, 150 pounds, and have a 30, cent a 30 inch waist, or you could be 150 pounds and have a 34 inch waist. It's just the difference between how much muscle you've got and how much body fat you've got. Obviously recording it, you can use scales, you can use tape measures, you can obviously track it through progress if you're dieting, just take measurements regularly at intervals, and you obviously just work on it. So next question is from Heidi. What's your opinion on carb cycling? Okay. Um, I've got to first start off by saying there's very there's loads of different forms of carb cycling. I'll take it. Um, do you want to get set up? There's very different. There's loads of different forms of carb cycling. Um, it depends on how experienced you are with it. So some people like to do one day low of carbs, one day high carbs. Um, some people like to do two days low carbs, one day high. Some people can go five days low, two days high. It all depends on your personal preference and also your experience with doing this. Um, when it comes to cycling, you want to make sure that if you're dieting, it's a deficit anyway. So you need to know what your calorie intake is throughout the day. You then need to make sure that your macros are right. So if you are doing a low carb day, you want to make sure that your fat intake is slightly higher. So it can balance out those. Um, carbs and the calories um, there's no right or wrong way to diet if carb cycling is something that works for you great stick with it if it's not something that works for you at least you've tried it and you found out there's no one size fits all when it comes to dieting so it's just a personal preference for people um, you want to just make sure that like I say you are balancing out your carbs with your fats and the calories make up and you're in a deficit all right um, I always go on the basis of hitting your protein first, then factoring your carbs and your fats later on, and making sure that higher carbs equals lower fats, lower carbs equals higher fats. Um, Heidi, if it's something you've done before and it seems to work for your body, go ahead and do it. You may find that on your lower carb days, trying to do strength training or trying to lift heavier weights, you may struggle a little bit. That's just because obviously you need carbs for your energy source. Um, I know fats are also energy as well, but for those explosive movements you can struggle a little bit. If it's a cardio day, you may want to go lower carbs, higher fats, just because you're going to be burning those fats for energy when you're doing your, car, uh, your cardio. Good. Push. One. Push. Come 
count. Rip it out. Get a little buck in. Plant it. Good. Push. Right, post training nutrition. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have me a jam donut. Are Put you, that are you into. Doing again? No, I've got a photo shoot in just under three weeks. Oh, great. Um, are, you trying to, are you getting bigger? No, I'm getting smaller now. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Not from the weighing, unfortunately, but it's getting there. So I'm going to talk about this in a little while because I had a question from Adam Morris, and I need to answer it. So we're going to be talking about fast-acting sugars, um, the effect it has on your body, and also training with having fast-acting sugars as well. Um, right, but for now I'm going to talk into this and enjoy it. Okay, hopefully the camera stays there. I've got a few minutes to talk about a question that was posted on Facebook by Adam Morris and he was talking about fast acting sugars. I'm going to pull it up on Facebook so I can have a quick read of it and tell you exactly what the question is asking. There's something like over a billion is it over a billion people now using Facebook. That is crazy. I bet they never expected that when they thought they'd set it up. Uh, here we go. A question from Adam Morris. Right, okay, question from Adam Morris on Facebook. When trying to gain weight, obviously carbs are important. Not true. Just to put that out there. As long as you're in a calorie surplus, you are okay and you should put weight on. It doesn't matter whether it's carbs, it can be fats, it can be proteins. As long as you're in a calorie surplus, you should be putting weight on. Some people, depending on somatotypes, don't react well to too many carbs, they put body fat on quite quickly. So it's making sure that you're the right somatotype and you put weight on with either fats or carbs or proteins, okay? Proteins obviously essential for everyday life and we all need it. Um, and stuff like sweets and biscuits are a good source of this. However, these also contain a lot of sugar. So while it's easier to hit high macro targets by eating these, is it wise from a health point of view to do this regularly? So the first part of the question is, when you're trying to gain weight, obviously carbs are very important. Carbs are important when you're weight training. So your body needs glucose from carb sources, so sugars. Um, not necessarily have to be sweets and biscuits or chocolate or donuts or cookies, whatever you fancy. It doesn't have to be from that source. It can be from potatoes, rice, veg, uh, not veg, pastas, rice, potatoes, breads. That's what I meant to say. Um, now, coming to, they're a good source of this. They're a good source because they're fast acting. So, the best advice I can give is when you finish training, if you have a sweet tooth like I do and you enjoy to, you like to relax on your diet, you can have that straight after you finish training because your body will not take them on a lot easier than when you've not trained and when your metabolism is slower. So when you've trained and you've burnt calories, your body will respond better to having simple sugars uh, like sweets, biscuits, cakes, donuts, whatever you fancy. I always go by the, the percentages 90% good, 10% bad. I post the 10% bad because people don't believe it, but having a 10% bad diet is actually still okay. You can still cut on that, you can still gain on that, it's what works for you. Um, so while it's easier to hit high macro targets, of course, because it's a man-made product and there's a lot of sugars in there, is it wise from a health point of view to do this regularly? So it goes back to the point of um, the insulin spike that you get from eating high sugary processed foods as opposed to eating more natural products, um, whole foods. When your body tries to digest cakes, biscuits, sweets, chocolate, whatever it may be, you have something called insulin spikes. Now this is, insulin is actually an anabolic hormone which helps growth, but having these spikes of insulin too regularly throughout the day if you've not trained, what you're doing is causing your insulin to become dependent on, you need to become dependent on insulin. So your body will naturally turn around and say, look, I'm not going to produce any more. You're going to have to get it from another source because I can't keep doing this. So your pancreas is going to just give up with that. So you're then going to, this is where the onset of diabetes comes on because there's too many spikes of insulin and your body just goes crazy for it. Whereas if you have them straight after your training, your body can easily digest them. So having them straight after that, 
your body will just take those nutrients, the sugars from your biscuits, sweets, cakes, whatever you like to have, and just take them straight into the muscles and react well. Eating from whole food sources is obviously a lot healthier because there is less of a spike of insulin, your body will produce better and general overall gut health and overall well-being. Whole food sources are going to be better for you, but nobody likes to have a 100% clean diet all the time. Everyone likes to have the odd occasion where they can have be a bit more relaxed, have an easier, easier life, they can enjoy life and have a few things that they enjoy. And with, this is where I come from. I do like to eat clean 90% of the time, 10% of the time. I do like to relax, enjoy myself. So I will allow a donut into my diet. I will track that in my macros. I use my fitness pal and make sure that that fits in. And I'm not going over wildly on my carbs or my fats. And I make sure I hit my protein content first before going on to my macros or my fats. Okay. I hope this helps a little bit. Adam, it was a perfect question because I did want to touch on it. I've spoke to quite a few people recently about this in the gym and I wanted to put this across on YouTube so more people can see it. If you're somebody, just a quick recap, if you're somebody that likes cakes, biscuits, sweets, chocolate, whatever it may be, if you're having it straight after your training, your body will take on those sugars a lot more efficiently than if you're having them without training because your metabolism is faster after burning calories in the gym. All right? Generally going from whole food sources is better, but nobody likes to have a 100% clean diet all the time. Okay, just got home. I've got a sweet potato in the microwave. Off it's going. Chicken, a few lettuce leaves, spinach leaves. Got some veg just boiling. Only gonna be in for a couple of minutes. Popped it all into my fitness pal. And I think I've got 85 calories left for the rest of the day. But that's okay because I'm not going to eat at the morning. I'm not going to use them. I'm going to stay a little bit under my calories. Just relax a little bit. So I'm going to get down to some work after I've eaten. Working on the project that's going to be coming in January. So keep your eyes peeled for that.